Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. We got another MCU pitch meeting. Which one, Dan? Moving on to Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Volume, well, I guess, Volume one. one. Volume yeah. one. All right. Let's go see what the problem is. <laughs> Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So you have a script for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's a movie about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Who the hell are the Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> well, they're Marvel characters that, that, that we own. They are? Wow, that doesn't even ring a bell. Yeah, most people don't even know who they are. So why would we make a movie about them? Because at this point, we can make a movie about literally anything, and people will pay us money to see it. That's a very good point. Yeah, and we're gonna make this one super funny, so people are really gonna enjoy it. Oh, uh, enjoying funny things is tight. So how does the movie start? <laughs> yes, well, the main guy, Peter Quill's mom is gonna die and then he's gonna get abducted by aliens before he even has time to mourn her death. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, not <laughs> really. That's super funny stuff. I love it. Kinda I sad. actually haven't got to the funny stuff yet. Okay, good. I didn't get the joke at all, but I didn't want to look <laughs> stupid. So anyway, we're gonna jump forward 26 years and now Peter Quill calls himself Star-Lord. Okay. And he's gonna steal this powerful orb thing so people are gonna try to hunt him down. Who's gonna hunt him? Well, there's this character Gamora and she's known as the deadliest woman in the galaxy. Oh, so she's gonna win all the fights she's in no she's gonna lose most of them yeah. oh yeah and she has to be saved several times anything really? else i should know about her well she's the daughter of the big bad guy thanos and she works for this movie's bad guy ronin and her sister nebula is hunting her down and she's supposed to get this orb thing but she was planning on betraying ronin wow it almost sounds like she should be the main character <laughs> yeah i know right why isn't she the main character because fair <laughs> enough there's also this character named rocket raccoon what does he do rocket well he has this raccoon. awesome scene where he's gonna save his friend by, you know, crashing a spaceship directly into him. That doesn't sound very helpful at all. Yeah, well, somehow it's gonna work perfectly and knock out the bad guy, but none of the good guys. Well, that doesn't make much sense, but I no, bet it's does. gonna look cool. Yeah, and also there's this lovable talking tree character named Groot. What's his deal? Oh, he's great. In the end, he's gonna sacrifice himself for everyone, and he's gonna die. Not permanently, oh. he's not. What? You can't permanently <laughs> kill off a lovable character. Oh, come on. This is a Marvel movie. Okay, but no way, man. Okay, uh, maybe I can have him be reborn. <laughs> and there's like a baby Groot at the end of the movie? As long as he's not dead by the end of it. Well, technically he will die, but there'll be another Groot that... Look, is there gonna be a cute character named Groot available for us to use in the sequel? Yeah, but like mm. he'll be... Well, then you tell yourself whatever you want. So oh, I will. <laughs> so what else happens? Well, all those characters are gonna get arrested by this police force called the Nova Corps. Okay. And they're gonna be super pumped that they caught Gamora since she works for Ronin and they've been having some serious Ronin problems. Oh, so they're gonna question her or use her as leverage? or something. No, they're gonna immediately put her in jail to die. Not not the brightest move. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty bad at their job. Sounds like it. Anyway, in jail, they're gonna meet this other character named Drax. Oh, what's his deal? Oh, he's funny. He takes everything literally. Oh, that's funny. How's that gonna work? <laughs> Inconsistently. Oh, really? Yeah, it's gonna be a thing whenever I can think of a joke to make, but other than that, he's just gonna understand things normally. Wow. And then all the characters <laughs> are gonna escape prison together. Is that gonna be hard to do? No, it's gonna be super easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because everything in the prison is stupid. How so? <laughs> well, they have these flying robot things that can't hit a target. Then they have guards that take turns shooting rockets instead of firing all at once, Good which point. buys the heroes a lot of time. Then for some reason, from the control room, you can control gravity in individual sectors in the prison, so they use that function to escape. Why would that gravity thing even be an option? Because I wrote that. Fair enough. So tell me more <laughs> about this Ronin guy. He's blue and pouty and super evil. Oh, he's evil? Okay, that then. does sound like a good villain. I thought you might like that. Oh, I do. So he gets an infinity stone, which gives him the power to wipe out civilizations like weed in a field. Well, it sounds like it's gonna be hard for the Guardians to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah, was... Oh, really? Yeah, even though he can easily kill them on several occasions, he's just gonna kinda knock them down repeatedly. <laughs> well, that's super considerate of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said Thanos is in this movie? Why does that ring a bell? Oh, he's like the biggest bad guy ever. We showed him for a second in a post credit scene in the Avengers. Sounds like a power guy. Oh yeah, this guy is so dangerous you don't even know. So what's he gonna do in the movie? He's gonna sit in, in a chair. Oh, yeah, it makes <laughs> big threats. Is he gonna get out of the chair, though? Oh, you bet he's gonna get out of the chair. He's gonna do some real damage. Amazing. In 2018. Oh, no. Anyway, so at the end of the movie, Peter's gonna save the day by grabbing the Infinity Stone in his hand and then holding hands with his friends and then blowing up Ronin. How did they know to do that? I don't know. Well, how is Star-Lord <laughs> able to hold an Infinity Stone without dying? Well, he's gonna tell Ronin, you said it yourself. We're the Guardians of the Galaxy. That, that, that doesn't 
explain it at all, nope. though. No, I guess not. So how did he survive that? Well, it's something to do with his father, but we're gonna explain that in the sequel. The primary threat of this movie is solved by something we're not gonna fully explain till the next movie. Exactly, yeah. That's super evil of you, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so about this Groot character, I guess I'll have to track down a voice actor for him. Yeah, I wouldn't put too much effort into that. All he says is literally, I am Groot. So what are you saying? Well, I mean, it'd be pretty pointless to hire a big name actor just to say three words over and over again. Yeah, I guess that would be a big waste of money. Oh, <laughs> I thought so. But what do I know? I'm just some okay. dude. Anybody could have done that. Let's be honest. Honestly, yes. Yeah. They gave me two of them today. Two I minutes. Know. Super easy, barely an in inconvenience. Apparently the Guardians of the Galaxy are so overpowered that anything for them is not barely an inconvenience. It's sold. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. i tell you what, though. I never really thought about Gamora's character having so many uh, issues that it makes her almost be the main character, but <laughs> there it was. So. I mean, we've kind of seen that in some other stuff, too. Like, we were talking about the third season of Mandalorian, where it kind of felt like they were putting a lot of emphasis on Bo-Katan. Yeah, kind of the case here, too. Especially being as powerful as she is, she really shouldn't be struggling as much as she is also. They're kind of forcing that kind of relationship there between her and Star-Lord. I mean, she's put off as powerful and then you see and then you see her in action and it's like, well, it doesn't seem that powerful. I'm but... pretty sure Nebula's probably stronger than you. Yeah, I don't get how that happened. At all. Either that or Nebula's just like not good at finishing the deal or not clever. I'm not sure. Probably more so the latter there, yeah. Yeah, poor Nebula's had it pretty damn rough. So, we'll save that for another time, fam. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. We'll have plenty of chance to talk about her. Absolutely. No mention of Yondo or any of the or any of the pirates there? So yeah, cool. that, that comes into play more so, I think, in the later ones anyways. Especially in the second one, we're going to see a lot of him. Of course. But he still had a really kick-ass weapon in this one. He did. I guess they're trying to point out the flaws in the film. And honestly, I don't think there was a lot there to discuss. Like, they kind of pointed out the prison was kind of stupid. The idea that you can whistle an arrow to kill people is flaw. <laughs> I mean, in the Marvel Universe, it's not the worst idea. Okay. Not, not compared to him holding an Infinity Stone with his bare hand and survive. Yeah, with no explanation as to why. Yeah. Again, they explain it later on. Right. So. But yeah, I, I can see the producer's uh, marketing opportunity there with Baby Groot. Yeah, when they saw when they saw a tree and they're like, yo, you're not killing him off. <laughs> we are marketing babies. You mean we can get a baby tree and sell it? Sell a million of them? Heck yeah. yeah. We're going to sell Baby Groot right next to Grogu. Yeah. That's they probably do, too. Certainly. <laughs> Come in. It's like, they probably got him in the little uh, drop little machine that drops a little thing to catch yeah oh God. it's like all right there's 10 million groots and one and one grogu oh no <laughs> and he's and he's tucked away in the back <laughs> good luck getting that one yeah that's that's exactly what that is <laughs> honestly i'm trying to figure out the whole thing about groot here because I, I never really got it myself what are that in three words oh i am Groot. i am groot and it became a huge marketing ploy. I don't know how they did that because it never really meant much to me so you say it enough it becomes memorable i guess is the thing I guess. I mean, and can you think of any other quotable dialogue from that film? From Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. Not off the top of my head. Exactly. <laughs> they, they beat it into your head so much, that's the only thing you can think of now, and now it's just famous. Well, all right. I guess I guess then they got their moneymaker there. Their physical moneymaker. Right. But he's right there. You really didn't need Vin Diesel for that. No, you could have you could have gotten the, you know, Joe Lara or something. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's what they needed. The Joe Lara voicing Groot. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't have just anybody do it. I think, you know, Groot being done by uh, Pierce Brosnan or something would sound kind of weird, but right. you didn't need Vin Diesel. Well, wasn't Bradley Cooper doing Rocket? Yes, he was. I couldn't tell it was Bradley Cooper at all. I couldn't either. But honestly, he did a good job. I like Rocket. He's one of my favorite characters, actually, in the oh, whole certainly. MCU. Oh, certainly. Him and Drax both. Oh, yeah. Great characters. I think that's really what made this movie work, is even though nobody knows who the Guardians of the Galaxy are, it's such a fun cast to be around. And they and they really were. They were just like a hodgepodge kind of put together of uh, all the worst stuff that just happened to have all the right stuff. Right. Yeah. Rocket's a genius. It's kind of um, yeah. like the Dirty Dozen of the MCU, except it's just four of them. Pretty much. Yeah. And, you know, they're a grungy group, and, you know, they... They're doing it, you know. They're in the dirty side of space, mm -hmm. if you will. So the the real blue collar side of side of things. Right. So. And I think too, just the old uh, like '80s and '70s references in the film too, because of Star Lord's past. I think made it a lot more enjoyable by older people. Yeah. The use of a decent soundtrack. Yeah. There too, where it's like you're not just pulling out all the easily recognizable songs from those days. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you're growing, you're going to some other good songs. So. Yeah, like my, this is actually like one of my mom's favorite films in the Marvel universe. Sure, probably because of because like of the, that. yeah, like I've actually seen her rewatch this one multiple times, which she hasn't done with any other movies. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I knew it would be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, not, not a whole lot of issues with the film. I mean, yeah, there's some plot holes there, but I think overall it's still a pretty fun film. Yeah, I, I I will say it's it's one of my it's one of the better ones in my opinion. You know, the outside of the Avengers ones. So, just just from its you know more down to earth blue collar type of thing there. So, exactly. Yeah, fam. I think that's gonna do it for us now. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, check us out on those things up top there, and like and subscribe again. Until next time, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.